Good evening, everybody. Brian Newbert here from uh, goldenblack.com. Not at the Chrysler Center, as you can probably tell. I'm homebound today. Mike Carmen made the trip to Michigan for us while I kind of transition out of things uh, here uh, in the near term. Um, but this is your wrap video anyway, following Purdue 75-70 to 70, uh, win at Michigan that I was not at. Um, doesn't stop me from hitting record on my computer and talking anyway. So um, thank you to the Purdue Club Hotel, uh, as always, for your support. We appreciate it. First thing that jumps out to me about this game is, uh, you know, Purdue kind of owed Michigan one. That They've been sort of that that team that, you know, funny stuff has happened against. Um Funny stuff has happened in favor of, and uh, Purdue kind of owed them one. And, uh, you know, whether it was the game a couple years ago where uh, Sasha Stefanovic gets lost to COVID right before Michigan, who was really good at the time, um, visits Mackey Arena to uh, the game a couple years ago where Travion Williams scores 100 points and grabs 50 rebounds and Purdue loses in double overtime to last year's uh, break Michigan caught with their COVID uh, situation buying them time, and then Purdue at the very tail end of a very difficult schedule break showing up and just not showing up. Uh, and I think a couple of years ago, too, didn't uh, Purdue go right from Florida State um, from the Big Ten ACC Challenge to Michigan, like on, on a two-day turnaround, the sort of thing that the Big Ten schedule makers, I think, have uh, ever since then made certain to do away with. Um, nevertheless, Purdue has caught some really – uh, tough luck against Michigan. Michigan's been really good, so make no mistake here. I'm not necessarily saying that those are the reasons Michigan's been beating Purdue so often, but I'm just saying it's a situation where Purdue kind of owed them one. And, um, you know, when when Purdue goes on that run at the end of the first half, it looked like, uh, you know, Purdue might have had a chance to really hand it to them there. Uh, I didn't think that uh, Purdue... Um, uh, closed either half terribly well. It should be noted. I just I just ran down the laundry list of all those circumstances that Purdue encountered against Michigan. Well, Michigan didn't have Jet Howard today, and Jet Howard's going to be a you know it is going to be a first round draft pick um, most likely uh, this spring, um, and that and that matters. Um, so I I didn't want to make it sound like all of the breaks have gone Michigan's way in the series. I'm just saying Purdue kind of owed them one here. And uh, Purdue got one. As I said before, it looked in the first half like, uh, you know, Purdue was really going to give it to them. Um, but they didn't close the first half great. Uh, they didn't close the end of the game great, uh, albeit. Um, I don't know if Ethan Morton actually had to actually perish in order for Hunter Dickinson to be called for an illegal screen. But... Um, uh, it doesn't matter now. Um, I just didn't think Purdue was ever able to really blow the game open. Uh, as close as they seemed a couple of times, you have to give Michigan a lot of credit for, you know, kind of kind of sticking around when things were going were really going against them. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think that I think that Michigan had one guy who could really hurt Purdue, and that was Hunter Dickinson. Cody Buffkin got loose a couple times. Uh, but also, I think Michigan, you know, benefited a little bit from pretty double teaming Hunter Dickinson as much as they did. That got some driving lanes for Buffkin for some other guys. Um, but a really good win for Purdue, a, a win in which Purdue played pretty well. Um, you know, giving up 20 points in the first eight minutes of the game, probably not ideal. Um, but I think Purdue, Purdue did what Purdue does. They they won on the road. They were solid in every phase. Uh, they did away with the live ball turnovers for the most part after halftime, and that really helped them. Zach Eady was really good, as always. Um, and it seemed like there for the first few minutes of the game that Michigan was perfectly content giving him the Travion Williams 36-point treatment uh, that Williams took advantage of a few years ago. Um, but uh, obviously, Edie did not get his 36. Uh, not that it matters one bit. The only thing that mattered for him was the fact that Purdue won this game. Um, but he obviously got his. But the difference, you know, in the game, quite honestly, was um, when the marquee center matchup was not in play, when Zach Edie was on the bench and when Hunter Dickinson was on the bench, Purdue's backup five man came in and scored, and Michigan's came in and fouled. And uh, that was Trey Kaufman-Ren versus Terrace Reed. 
uh, albeit Terrace Reed's only a freshman, has got a chance to be a really good player there. Got a chance to be an NBA guy there uh, in time. But um, this was kind of the Trey Kaufman Ren game for Purdue. You know, this kid works harder than just about any kid I've I've seen. Jaden Ivey was this way. Carson Edwards was this way. Um, Brandon Newman a few years back definitely was this way, not, which isn't to say he's not now, but um, he's around all the time. He's around the facility all the time. You know, before practice, we're out there the other day um, waiting to do pre-practice interviews, and Trey Kaufman's out there by himself with Tommy Luce. Well, if Tommy Luce is there, I guess Trey Kaufman wasn't by himself, was he? Um, and he's just he's just shooting. He's just working on post moves and stuff like that. And you know you. He's been back in the facility um, after games, oftentimes this season. He walked in the back of one of these videos a few weeks back. I can't remember what game it was, coming back to the arena to come to come work some more. It's one of those deals where if people get what they deserve, um, if, the, if they get payout that correlate, why am I holding a Target gift card? <laughs> they, they, if people get what they deserve through their hard work, Trey Kaufman Rand had this one coming. And I've kind of said all season long, it's only a matter of time before he sort of has this game where he's he he finally gets the success he's he's worked toward, and it changes the game for Purdue. He had a couple of them in the non conference season. You remember West Virginia? I think if I recall correctly, he was pretty good, and um, he did some really big things against some overmatched opponents. But in a big game like this, for him to come in and go four for four, get eight points in nine minutes, that's the difference in the game. Uh, when you look at it all across the board, Purdue did a lot of things right. Purdue had a lot of good performances from people. But those eight points off the bench from Trey Kaufman Wren, when Zach Eadie's not in the game, I think that's the difference in the game, uh, if you ask me. Uh, you know, I think it goes without saying, too. Uh, where would Purdue be here in a couple of these in the Big Ten race without David Jenkins? You know, does Purdue win at Ohio State without David Jenkins making a bunch of threes? Does Purdue win at Michigan tonight without David Jenkins scoring eight points off the bench, including two more threes and a couple of free throws, giving them really solid minutes in the first half, aside from one really bad decision where he threw a possession away um, when Braden Smith was in foul trouble? Uh, cannot give him enough credit for this game, too. And it it kind of it kind of brings to mind something I, I wrote about in my column uh, the other day. Uh, it if you read it, thank you if you did, um, that when you look back at at the whole springtime desperate chase for a, for a marquee point guard to complete this team, you know, where would P Purdue be right now had they gotten one of those guys? Um, it's hard to be better than 20 and 1, so it's hard to say they would be better. One of those guys would have come in and blocked Braden Smith's development. Um would have maybe blocked a little bit of Fletcher Lawyer's development, depending on who that player would have been. Um, it would have been shots and a starting position that would have been kind of part of the deal, whether it was stated or not stated. And any shot a Nigel Pack or a Tyrese Hunter would have expected coming into the season uh, would have been X number of fewer shots Zach Eady would be getting. Um this has really just kind of played out perfectly. And when you look at what Purdue settled for, settled for um, in David Jenkins, who, when I say they settled for him, I, I'm not saying that as an indictment of him as a player. I'm just telling you, he, he's not really a point guard. He wasn't really what Purdue was looking for. Uh, they've kind of, um, they've kind of, they've kind of retrofit this thing a little bit to, to kind of make him work at point guard. To his credit, he seems to have done everything Purdue's asked of him. He's giving them good minutes in a situation that's, probably foreign to him. You know, this is a guy who's been a leading scorer on a lot of different teams. This is a guy who's made more threes than just about anybody in college basketball, who now all of a sudden is a 10 minute a game point guard. Um, and, uh, you know, to his credit, and I, I, I don't think I can, I can overstate the importance of this to his credit by every indication, both told to me and observed by me, he's been a great teammate. He's enjoyed his time here. He, he, he's all in, he, he is not, sitting there pining for more minutes. He's, I'm sure he'd love to be playing more and shooting more and, 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 and whatnot. Um, but he's playing for a great team. And, uh, you know, sometimes there are situations where winning has to be enough. And I, I said from the first time I met the kid that 
His personality could be a really big deal for this team because he's got a charisma to him. He's got a wisdom to him. He's got a he's got a presence to him that I don't think this team otherwise had. And assuming everything is as I, I suspect that it is and that I've observed that it is, you can't give David Jenkins enough credit for the influence he's had on this team, his willingness to be part of something bigger than himself. Um, and uh, just a really, really good story um, for Purdue. And something that kind of puts a face on why this team is good is is that you have guys who seem to be willing to put their personal best interests, whether that's their statistics, whether that's their professional stock, whatever it might be, aside for the betterment of the whole. And I think that um, you see these guys playing for one another uh, more than you know a lot of other teams in the country. And I think that's probably a little bit of a reflection of what Matt Painter has gone and looked for in recruiting and been able to diagnose in recruiting, um, as well as everything that's going on for everyone else, where a lot of teams, and a lot of teams produce playing, have all these NIL mercenaries in their locker rooms who just met in June, and uh, a lot of them are in it for something other than the team's best interests in a lot of ways. Coaches are having to manage this. Coaches are having to manage a lot of new personalities that they didn't build a relationship with over an extended period of time in recruiting. They kind of um, had all these shotgun weddings back in uh, back in the spring, and I, I think Purdue's taking advantage of that. I, I think that has completely canceled out Purdue's lack of continuity, Purdue's relative lack of experience. And I think it's leveled the playing field a little bit, and it's given Purdue a bit of an opportunity to take advantage of other people's unevenness uh, when Purdue itself is not really um, an established team in a lot of ways. They are now halfway through the season, but they weren't back in November is what I'm saying. So um, kind of off on a little bit of a diatribe here, but this was a, this was a really good win for Purdue. Every road game, every road win, every win – especially this year when the, the difference between 1 and 12 really uh, in the Big Ten is Purdue winning more close games than everybody else. Uh, it, it is an absolute um, – it is a lobster tank of a Big Ten season. It is just a bunch of lobsters in a tank just climbing over one another, just trying to trying to get past one another, just laying in a pile. And, uh, you know, Purdue's the lobster that has won the most close games this year. Uh, you can attribute that to Fletcher Lawyer's shot at Ohio State. You can attribute that to them winning in overtime at Nebraska. And you can attribute that to Zach Eadie's game winner at Michigan State. Otherwise, the difference between 9-1 uh, and one in the Big Ten and uh, – I'm trying to do math here. 6-4, um, and 7-3 and three is not very – is not very big. Purdue's been really good in big moments. That is a That is a testament to the freshmen as much as anything because – as you saw again tonight, Braden Smith is phased by nothing. Um, Fletcher Lawyer is phased by nothing. And, you know, Braden Smith sort of taking command of that game again down the stretch to make sure Michigan didn't didn't come back despite the um despite the uh despite the amnesty given Michigan to set illegal screens, um was really something. Uh, and uh you just kind of Another one of those situations where you just kind of wonder, well, I, I shouldn't say that. You know, Purdue, you just keep waiting for the for the inconsistency that has come not only with teams this young and this new, but just throughout the Big Ten in general. Um, it's sort of the Big Ten's thing this year. Uh, the You know, 2 through 12 right now are, there's no separation between those teams. They're all the same. The difference between one and the rest of them is the fact Purdue's won all these close games and they've been so damn consistent. And I think Purdue's personality profile as a team this year really jives with consistency. And I think that was the biggest takeaway from the Minnesota game. As I said, after that Minnesota game, that when a team in Purdue's position shows up against a team in Minnesota's position on a sleepy Thursday night in the snow, um, it's cold out. Nobody's talking about this game. Uh, things like that, and Purdue performs the way Purdue performed in that game, that speaks to consistency. That speaks to a team that's going to show up every night, and you are going to have to beat them because they're not going to beat themselves. And, uh, you know, Purdue showed it again today. This was this was more than a five-point win. I, I, I know the final the final score is going to show 75-70. to 70. 
um, thanks to the banked in three after the after the illegal screen uh, and some other funny stuff that happened there in the last couple of minutes of the game. But this was this was a performance befitting a double digit sort of win, and you know for Purdue to perform that way against a pretty good opponent, um, a t- and. Uh, it's hard to know who's good in the Big Ten outside of Purdue because Purdue's body of work is what it is. But everybody else, it, it's pretty obvious who's bad. Uh, Minnesota's obviously in a really tough spot. Um, I don't want to say Ohio State's bad, but they're having a bad season. Um, but everybody else is okay, except Nebraska. They're better, but they're still not good. Uh, but everybody other than those teams is neck-and-neck, eye-to-eye, toe-to-toe, um, ear-to-ear, uh, whatever body part-to-body part you want to talk about. Um, and let, let's keep that mature, people. Um, it's just all even. Um, and, you know, Purdue has a chance here uh, in these next couple weeks, these next couple days, actually, to really take a big step toward winning this league. Um, I think today was a big one. Anytime you pin a loss on one of those – five win teams thus far that's a big deal uh that's separation for you if you can if you can tag another one on michigan state sunday at home um they have malik hall back but you you have home court and you they fully have your attention um you know purdue's going to put itself in a really good position here uh very early uh too early to even talk about but it's never early to really talk about because this league is such a lobster tank that um um, it's fitting to look ahead and say, "Hey, Purdue's ten and one in the Big Ten now. If 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 they win on Sunday and no one else has more than five or six wins at this stage, you're in a pretty good spot. Um, provided the bottom doesn't drop out, and there has not been a single indication this season, not even a shred of indication with this Purdue team that the bottom's going to drop out. It's even when they lost, they had that game won. They did enough to win that game. Um, and they've showed up for every game. They've competed to the very end. They've played hard. They've tried hard. They've worked hard. They've listened. Uh, you just can't ask any more of this team than what you've gotten. I understand I'm saying that about a 20-1 uh, and one team now that uh, is ranked number one in the country. So the margin for them being better is pretty slim. But you just can't ask for more than what you've gotten from Purdue this season. And this win tonight at Michigan, 75 to 70, was another reflection of all of those things uh, that go into that. So I've gone way too long with this video. Um, I forgot to remind you that Zach Eadie's a good basketball player. Uh, so that will cover that. Uh, I already mentioned Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer, how good they are. Mason Gillis, this was a big time Mason Gillis game. Uh, I, I, feel, I feel compelled to just kind of run down the list here, but I'm, I'm gonna spare you uh, all of that. And thank the Purdue Union Club Hotel uh, one more time for their promotional support. We appreciate that very much. So this has been uh, Brian Newbert from not the Chrysler Center, uh, from goldenblack.com. Thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. And thank you for processing our materials, however it is you process our materials. And be sure to go to our site and check out Mike Carmen's game report. He's got post-game video, all that stuff. And we'll have a lot more on our site uh, throughout the morning. So... Thanks, everybody.